Okay, so we've got Dr. Avi here. We've got Dr. Michelle Lowe, different kinds of doctors. Avi's a medical doctor. Michelle Lowe is a doctor of philosophy and psychology, I believe. They're going to uh, debate organic. So everyone else in the room is muted. Uh, it's just going to be them uninterrupted until they decide to stop. And uh, with that, I will unmute the both of you and you can just proceed as you see fit. Avi, you're unmuted, and let me just find Michelle. Michelle, you're unmuted. Uh, enjoy your debate. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Michelle? Hi, I'm good, thanks. Okay, so can, you get, can everyone hear me clearly? Is the audio good? Okay, cool. So I'll take the position that... Um, Organic as a heuristic is carnist. Uh, it should be avoided by vegans. Um, and I'm assuming you'll take the, uh, to the debate proposition, I'll assume you'll take the I'll also add that the proposition of if organic is carnist is tangential to the proposition of if it pays to care about whether organic is carnist or if, it, if it's something we should be cared, caring about or if it's something we should be investing our energy in, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that is a different proposition. So th these are two different propositions, and I'm happy to talk about both, but we have to deal one at a time. So the first proposition is, is organic carnist? And then the second proposition is, is it carnist to the degree that we should be investing our energy caring about it? Two different issues. Okay. All right. Um, so do you want to... Well, let me let me just put out my kind of problem with this issue first of all i'm assuming which, which, which issue which issue the first or the second the organic is carnist issue okay so the problem that i see with making a statement like that is that we have to be very careful um, with making blanket statements, because if you say all organic produce is carnist, that's, that's not the claim. I said as a general heuristic. I, I, I anyone who knows my claim, anyone who knows my claim knows that I'm I, I am very full aware of veganic organic products that vegan that products that are organic that do not use animal products or manure. I'm very aware of them. They're so fringe that you you wouldn't be wrong at approximating them as zero in calculations. But yes, I'm aware that they exist, even though they're incredibly fringe. And I'm aware, and in that case, I have no problem with them. I've never made the claim that all organic products are carnist. Always, I've almost always specified, whenever anyone who knows my position knows that I've specified that veganic organic is not carnist. In fact, it may be carnist to buy conventional if veganic organic is readily available and if hypothetically it was cheaper. But uh, yeah, so again, which issue do you. So, Aside from that, do you have an issue with the first um, proposition, given that my position is clarified to, to say that this is a heuristic and that it would not apply to veganic organic? Yes, but... Right. In the UK, um, organic produce is defined quite clearly by DEFRA. I'm assuming that the definition of organic is the same where you come from that um, organic produce has got to have been produced with no artificial fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, et cetera. Is that the same? Is that, is that the definition that's, that's of nearly ubiquitous. we're working yeah, with? Yeah, the, the nearly, yeah, the, the ubiquitous problem, the problem with organic uh, across virtually every continent is that they, they don't allow synthetic fertilizers. That's, the, that's where the difference in demand to the animal agriculture industry, specifically dairy, comes from. Okay, so so we're, we're working from the same definition. So that's that's good to know. Um, okay, so is organic carnist? Right. I'm happy to agree with you that the use of animal fertilizers by way of manure or slurry, whatever, right, that anything that comes from the animal industry, I'm happy to agree with you that vegans need to look very carefully at that issue. So it's great that 
were able to have these kind of debates and scrutinise the not not only the industry but the literature on it. So it's it's great that we're here tonight uh, with this in mind. My issue, though, and and I think this is where you've offered or uh, wanted to debate me on this is the video that I made the other day. Um, because I've kind of kept out of this debate or this issue up to now because it's unclear. There's there's so much uh, lack what, of. What, when you say it's unclear, what when you, what do you mean? What is unclear? Distinction between right, right. As I said, I'm happy to to go along with your premise that any use of animal products, animal byproducts, manure, etc. Make, gives gives a question mark to the the way that that thing has been, pro as, especially if that's if, not my uh, proposition. Um, my my, pro oh, my yeah, premise sorry. or proposition, yeah, my premise or proposition is not that these things give a question mark. My premise or proposition is that these products, given that we have cheaper available alternatives and easily accessible alternatives, my mm -hmm. proposition is that the per as a general heuristic the purchase of organic products is unethical as a general heuristic. And it is something that vegans should avoid. And for all intents and purposes, it's carnist. Right. What about then conventional agriculture that uses manure? Yeah. So it absolutely doesn't use manure. Sure. Um, it uses about a fourth of the manure that organic uh, uses. Uh, it's, it's a ratio of, or a fifth, about ratio is about four to one. So, what, 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 then the reason, the reason that, be, again, like the reason that wouldn't be carnist is if you set that standard for all vegans, then you would, co then you would commit uh, the vast majority of vegans to death. And that would be counterproductive. I don't see, I don't see, I don't see how that standard would apply the same way with avoiding organic. I think that's actually nothing comparable. There's a clear symmetry breaker there. For the it's actually average, easier. Average, you save money when you. No, avoid no, no, no. It. For the average consumer, there's a massive problem because it doesn't say on when when you buy a packet or a, a, a pound of organic tomatoes, it doesn't say how that's been grown. So you don't know if you go into that's why, a market. It's a heuristic. Or a that's why we're using a heuristic. We're not saying in every atomized case. Just like you, don't, you may not know. Look, if you have a certain plant, you may not know that there may be an animal product in it or not. But if they do advertise that there's an animal product in it, it may, if that's the case, they advertise that it is the case that we're using animal products, which is pretty much the case with organic because of how fringe veganic organic is. And the average case of renewer usage in conventional is just far lower than that. So that's not again, true. do you not understand what I mean by you understand what I mean by heuristic? Do, do you know I what do. I'm talking about? I do know what, I, what you mean by heuristic. But can you just tell it back to me so I can so we can be clear we're on the same page? A, a, like a cognitive shortcut. What? Okay, a cognitive. Yeah, but it's like a general. It's more than that. It's not just a cognitive shortcut. A, a gen generalization. Yeah, and, and we use heuristics all the time. Organic yeah. is carnist is a heuristic. Now, what's the prop? The question is, what separates organic is carnist as a heuristic from something fr from all sorts of other byproducts, such as dairy, such as consuming a cup of milk or weak? Because I don't see it. I asked for organic diets, and I found that they cause this about the same amount of demand, even assuming st steel mans. They really cause more demand than dairy, uh, than, than a glass. I'm convinced at this point that an organic diet compared to a conventional diet causes more economic demand for dairy industry than drinking a cup of glass, a, a cup of milk a day, based on everything I've seen. And we can go through those well, numbers. No, it doesn't. I don't know where okay, you live, but in the UK. Yeah. We can do it for the UK, UK as well. We can do it for the UK too. In the UK, up to 80% of crops particularly maize less so for other crops is grown using manure as a fertilizer growing using exclusively because manure. wait wait i i because i heard this on the stream that you did i, he I heard this claim on the stream my question is 
is it grown using exclusively manure or is it grown using manure? Those are two different claims. Would I, how would I know? That well, you're the making the claim. The well, I can give you data on the, as a general rule of thumb. I can give you data on the UK and the difference <laughs> between that. organic. I, I can give you data using the difference <laughs> between. Michelle, I can give you data on the UK showing you the difference between synthetic fertilizers and manure usage. And it's, and it's, I'll grant you that the UK gives the best uh, case scenario, but it's no contest, even still. Um, conventional uses, by far and large, they use synthetic fertilizers far more than they use manure you know, across the board. And so, and that's data from the FAO. We can go through that data. And you're going to make the claim. If they're still yes, using they're manure. Yes, they're still using manure. I'm aware of that. They're still using manure. That doesn't... Yes, case that's closed. why... No, not case closed. Again. Yes, it is. It <laughs> no, is. no, no that's not... Making, okay, let making. me ask. <laughs> if someone's going to no. kill five people... Wait, wait you listen, listen to me for... If someone's going to kill one person versus kill five people and says, well, listen... If we had to choose between one or the other, we should choose killing one person versus five. We should versus five people, and then you tell me, well, they're still going to kill a person. Case closed. Like, no, there's still one option that's far more ethical than the other. The average consumer, then let's let's take this down to real basics. For the average consumer who does not want to consume any animal product or byproduct. I, either accidentally through the consumption of something that contains one ingredient that has been produced using manure, how are they going to discern making that decision? It's going to be very, very hard to do that. And that's why we have a general exactly. booster to minimize it. Exactly. exactly. Just I like that's why we, exactly. Well. That's why there's a general, I think, you no, you're shifting, you're shifting, you're, you're, you're. No, 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 no. The, per, the video that I made. What do you think I my made, position is, Michelle? I made, right, was making the distinction between the arguments that are made in uh, locations like this one between vegans who are debating the nuances, are interrogating the industry, are interrogating the science. That's fantastic. It's fantastic that we're having these discussions. Right. But for the general population to whom we are informing, like now whether you're just it's as in the second proposition, Michelle. OK, we're talking no, about. No, the first no, proposition. No. Yeah. Yep. Now we're equivocating. OK, we I can spell the equivocation out if you'd like. Do you know the? Do you are you familiar with the two propositions that we spec that I specified in the beginning? So the two propositions, Michelle, were number one is organic harness as a general heuristic, and number two, for the number two is exactly the same thing you're saying for the general population. How is it worth talking about it? How is it going to have downstream effects? Is it going to turn people away from veganism? All those things are the second proposition. We can talk about that. I think you're wrong about that too. By the way. We can talk about that, but it's tangential to the first proposition. The first proposition is just, is organic carnus? The answer is, it's no more carnus than conventional farming. Okay, conventional so, oh, just, okay, 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 so let me ask you this. Okay, so let me ask you, is, is drinking a, okay, is stabbing one cow no more carnus than stabbing ten, than stabbing five cows? Both carnist. They're both equally carnist. Both carnist, yeah. I, uh, I didn't ask if they're both carnist. I asked if they are both equally carnist. Are they both equally carnist, Michelle? It would be a non vegan thing to do to kill any animal. That's not an answer. Animal. Okay, so now it's another. That's a dodge. I'll ask the question. Yeah, yeah so the question. Okay, but that's not that's a dodge though. You're actually having it's not the answer you want, but it's my yeah, answer. So, okay, okay, no, 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 but that's not actually an answer. So here's the question again. So Isn't the question is: you ask me, Michelle, is Michelle, one cow or five cows? Mm -hmm. No, no that's not that, that wasn't the question. No, 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 Michelle, that wasn't the question. They're, they're, oh, you, oh, they're equally okay. So that is an answer. They're both equally non-vegan. There we go. Okay, that is actually an answer. Okay. So they are both, so and let me ask you this, is stabbing one cow and a million cows equally non-vegan? Equally non-vegan, yes. yes. Okay, so is killing, I'm just, let's, well, let's take it to the max then, Michelle. 
is stabbing one cow versus stabbing like all the cows, billions of cows. Are they equally non? Are they equally yes. wrong? They are equally they are equally non vegan. Yes. What? Let me just get clarity. What? What do you? What do you mean by non vegan? What do you mean? E what do you mean by equally non vegan? Because a cow would be intentionally causing the death of an animal, presumably to eat it, I don't know, or to... Do you think they're equally... Do you think they're equally... Yeah, I, I understand. But do you think this is like a, a, a binary thing? Do you think... That, do you think? Are you just saying this is like a binary classification or are there gradations of when you say things are veganism? Oh, that's not a gradation. There's no gradation. No gradation. Okay, okay. Do you think things... Or let me just ask it this way. Do you think they're equally wrong? You broke up a little bit then. Do you, do you think they're equally wrong? Yes, they are equally wrong, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they're equally wrong. Okay. So it's equally... Just to be clear. So it is equally wrong to kill one being than to kill a billion beings. Yes. Okay. I mean, I mean, it depends right. on the circumstance. Yeah. Wait, it no, depends. no, no. All, all else equal. Don't, don't, don't add in something not entailed. All things being equal. All things being equal. Yes, it's equally wrong. Okay. Equally wrong. Okay. Equally kill wrong. One cow okay. or a billion cows. Equally wrong. Equally non. Okay. Equally non Would you say the same thing? I'm just curious. Would you say the same thing for humans? Yes. Okay, so killing one person versus killing a, a billion people. It's just equally wrong. It's equally wrong. Okay. Yes. So just just to be clear, like the Holocaust, the mass genocides, everything, and uh, someone who killed one person, um, that those two events are All equally things being wrong. equal. All things being equal. Yes. They are both all right, wait. I just want to equal. make sure there's not. I just want to make sure that there's not. When you say, when I say all things being equal, I don't mean like we assume everything comes out to the same outcome uh, after it all happened. I'm I'm saying everything like the value. Let's say whatever amount of yeah. utility one person, yeah, one person would contribute is the same as uh, these other individuals. Um, all those things well, considered. Then, yeah. Then, like, you're switching. You, you, the, the, those are not equal situations, then. Okay, so th that's what I when I say all else being equal, I mean that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when I say all else being equal, I mean that we have a, a person, a person, each individual person is going to have the same impact to society, impact to whatever externalities, positive or negative, as another person. And so the question I'm just asking you is. Is it equally wrong to kill one of those people than to kill a billion of those people? Yes. Okay. Let me just ask you this. So let's say, um, let's say you have two scenarios, and scenario one, one person is going to get tortured to death, and then scenario two is a multiverse of people, uh, just trillions and trillions and trillions of people are going to get tortured to death. Right. You okay, have to. Right. You, okay. you have to select. Okay. Yeah, you have to select between which world you would prefer. Which world would you you would like to instantiate? Which Which world would you prefer? I don't know. Without without sure. more without more information, I couldn't answer that question. Question. Oh, okay. So you you would just take the agnostic position between one person being tortured to death and a, a multiverse of trillions and trillions of people being tortured to death. Well, they'd both be equally wrong. Therefore, I'd need oh, more I'm equally wrong. Okay. okay. If you were asking me to decide on whether I do scenario A or scenario B and kill one versus trillions, I can't make that decision based on the information that I've got. got. All else, let's say the information is all else being equal. You've you've just said that the information. No, I say all. Both they're both wrong. They're both equally they're both wrong. Equally both wrong. equally wrong. Okay. All right. So is is there any? Let me just ask you this. Like, is there any amount? Is there any amount of suffering I could scale up on one side to change your view that they're that they're equally wrong? No, killing anyone is wrong. Regardless, yeah, God, you, circumstance. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you hold that for like a bug? Like, like if you were to. Just if someone were to like 
pry the limbs off a bug or step on a bug or something. And then someone were to torture just uh, a trillions of trillions of humans to death. Are you really wrong? Uh, you broke up then. So it was one bug versus what was the second thing? The second thing. Uh, tr trillions, trillions and trillions of humans. Uh, torturing uh, one bug to, to death and then torturing well, trillions they're, of they're, humans. they're not equal. Oh, they're okay. Equal. Yeah. Okay, so you would you would say that there's a difference there because of the the inequality of the the species or ability to experience ability to experience. Oh, okay, but wouldn't you say that the cumulative effect of like trillions of people to experience is greater than the experience of one individual? No. no? So you think the experience of one individual is is just as great as the experience of trillions and trillions of individuals. If, if everything is equal, then yes. And by everything is equal, I just want to be clear. Like, So let's say the experience value of one is X. The experience value of a trillion individuals will be a trillion X. That's what I mean by all else being equal. Yeah, so they're both equally wrong. I don't know okay. how many other ways we, you can, we can talk about this. They're both equally wrong. So, wait, so, I, think I, I think I understand where the, the, I think there may just be a miscommunication. I don't think you might be tracking here. Um, when I say, when I say, when I say all else being equal. If you go back to the cow situation, right, wait, killing one oh. cow or five cows, they are both equally non-vegan okay so i that's I the think bottom what, line okay i think what's going on here is i think when i say all else equal it seems like you take that to mean like the outcome just so happened to be morally equal that but that's not what i actually mean when i say all else being equal i mean all the characteristics on one end is equal to the characteristics of one person on the other end. Not that all the characteristics of one person on one end is equal to the characteristics of the summation of the trillions of people on the other end. Do you see the difference? Yeah, but they're both equally wrong. They are both okay, so equally vegan. Okay. okay, so so um, do you? Let me just I ask thought, you this: Do you think? Oh, okay. If you go back to right, so you 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 can tell me that there's you know for for as many different scenarios as you like. Let's go back to the basic situation of one cow versus five cows, both equally non-vegan. Therefore, both equally wrong. if you have agricultural produce that is produced organically using manure, it is as bad as conventional farming that also uses manure, even if the conventional farming is using less manure. Can I ask you this? Let's say, let's say someone manure. buys, yeah, let's say someone buys organic and let's say someone goes on a carnivore. Are they both equally wrong? Oh, sorry, you broke up then. So someone who's buying what organic, organic what organic, yeah. organic. someone someone's buying organic. Someone's going to go on an organic diet, and someone's going to go on a carnivore diet. Are they both equally right. non-vegan? No. Why? What's the difference? They're not equal. So why? So what's the symmetry breaker then? Why are they equal in the case of? Organic compared to conventional, but not organic compared to so the they are, diet. they are not the same situation. They are different situations. So you're breaking, What's breaking the difference? The of the two scenarios. What's the difference? Well, one is someone who is buying organic tomatoes, right, whereby that manure would have been produced anyway by the cows that are being consumed by the person on the carnivore diet. So if the person on the carnivore diet wasn't consuming those cows and the demand for those cows was so low that it was completely out of the range of the average farmer to buy the manure, which would be now a very scarce entity, the line is Whilst we Whilst have, we have are, are you million, saying there's more demand, Michelle? Is that where this is going? Like, where, where, where is this going? Is there more demand? 
Is that the difference? More people buy animals that produce manure. The more manure is going to be produced, obviously, the cheaper it is for farmers to use that manure, more convenient because many farmers right. are using oh, the manure from their own animals, so effectively it's free. Yeah, I, I understand all of this. Right. Like everything you're saying, Michelle, I understand. I've heard a million times. I just want to get a clear answer yeah. out of you because you seem to be rambling right now. Yeah. Look, so is the dif what's the difference between those two things? Does it come out to difference in demand? Like what, what's the symmetry breaker? Why is one more, more carnist than the other? Because the person who is eating the cow, i.e. buying the cow to eat, the, carniv the, car the person on the carnivore diet is creating the demand. If that is demand wasn't more there... Is demand or more demand? Is there there no more? Okay, wait, 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 Michelle, Michelle. Is it that there's more demand? No. Is, there, is it that there's more demand, Michelle? Is that the di is that the difference? So people buy animal products, the more manure is produced. Okay, so is it the difference that there's a different differential in demand? Stan, why? Is it the difference that there's a differential in demand, Michelle? Uh, and I'm just asking you a question: Is that is this difference? translating into a difference in economic demand. Are you saying that the carnivore diet would create far more economic demand than the organic diet, therefore they're not equally non-vegan? Is that what you're saying? For the cow, yeah. Okay, yeah. so, and then yeah. why can't, why so can't the, the person, same thing apply? The person buying the, the cow is creating the demand. Mm -hmm. But then you just told me The person me before, buying the tomato yeah, 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 I understand. is creating the demand. I, un I understand, but you just told me that the degree, the amount doesn't matter because if it's five cows versus one cow, it doesn't make a difference. They're equally wrong. But you're not looking at cow versus cow. You're looking at a cow versus a tomato. No, I'm looking at cow versus cow because in one case it you're translates not, into cow, demand for cows. No, it no, it translates into demand for cows at the end of the day. Same thing for same manure comes the most majority of manure comes for dairy cows. Absolutely does. Oh, well, sure, we can go through the calculations if you like. Economics. A, a producer mm -hmm. of tomatoes will buy the cheapest fertilizer. They actually right? buy the more expensive. Economics. They actually buy them. They actually buy them. Well, yes and no. They actually buy the more expensive fertilizer, but it comes out cheaper in the, the end of the, the long term because they're able to produce more because of it. Like synthetic so fertilizers more, per more, pound. More it, 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 yeah, yeah, sure, 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 absolutely. And there's a differential. There's, but, but that's not necessarily. But that's not necessarily true in organic because organic doesn't allow the cheaper option. That's the difference. Organic does not allow force you to buy the manure from the cow. So uh, mm. again, like if mm. you're saying, are you, look, let's just be clear. Are you saying that there is any demand whatsoever for, for da dairy farming produced by the organic industry compared to conventional on average? What dairy farming? So for milk? No, uh, well, uh, again, uh, all, uh, and uh, all uh, products, uh, milk uh, and uh, all, milk and all sellable products, milk and all sellable products. It's, look, it's not just milk that dairy farms sell. It's the slaughtered, the meat of the slaughtered cow after. It's the leather of the cow after the cow gets slaughtered. And yes, it's the manure as well. Sure, sure. Okay, so does sure. it create some amount of, so is there some amount of demand differential between organic and conventional? Yes or no? Not necessarily. Not I, I, I agree not necessarily. I agree it's not as, it's a contingency. But is does is there, is there something pragmatically there that make, creates a differential based on the data? It depends on the consumer. I can't. I, okay, I can't I just, I, that's, that's why I said on av that's why I said on average. So on average, is there a differential? The answer, the answer is yes, and we can go through the data on that. So the answer is yes, there is a differential. The ratio is about one to four. So, and we can go through the data for that. If you, and that, and that, that is true. The differential, a differential is there in the UK. It's there in the US. It's there in Canada. It's there in Asia. It's mm. there in Africa. It's there across all continents. Mm, right. 
So now my question is, if there is a differential in demand, what's the symmetry breaker between the differential in demand between conventional NLP versus the differential in demand between a organic diet and a carnivore diet? Is it just the degree of demand? Because the, the person eating the carnivore diet is creating the demand for the animal. Uh, yeah, the person, and the person who is on the tomato would not be consuming a tomato that was produced using manure if the demand for the cow wasn't there in the first place. That's, the manure yeah. is the byproduct, but, the, uh, but the it is still, but it is still pot. Yes, but it is still possible that they they are creating demand for the process of for the dairy process. If you have a process no, X not. and it creates no. products, no. yes, a person yes. buying an organic Look, tomato is not creating the demand for the cow. Michelle, uh, yes, they absolutely are. They absolutely are. They're the not. reason they are, yeah, sure. oh, look, 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 if someone buys, if someone buys, look, if someone produced tomato, do you think, okay, look, which, Michelle, which Michelle, is also Michelle, produced using manure. Michelle, if oh. someone buys the leather of dairy cows, if someone buys the leather of dairy cows, right, would, are they creating economic demand yeah. for the process yeah. of dairy farming? Yes. Okay, so they're buying a byproduct. You know, no, they're not buying the leather for the milk, but you understand that just because it's a byproduct that that is not for the purpose of the milk, that can still create economic demand for the milking process. Because if you have because process X that produces byproducts, is, uh, is independent, one second, there is an independent demand for leather. Okay, so, so and, and, there's, a and that. there's a demand for manure. Why? Where's the symmetry? Because the manure is there anyway. In really? massive so there, if it's there, just because it's there, just because it's there anyway, just because things are there anyway, great demand for the process to those things. That's that's why they're being sold. There's every bit of information that shows that they are actually being sold for substantial amounts of money. Dairy farms get hundreds of thousands of dollars for manure alone, even though it's there anyway. It's just it doesn't follow that there can't be demand <laughs> just because it's there anyway. That's great, but they're not just they're not just selling to organic farmers, are they? Are, in the UK, only in the UK, only well, three percent, two point seven percent of crops are produced. Which yep. includes wheat, maize. maize I see. I saw the data. Yep, I've seen that data on the stream. So yep. the problem with that yep. is the problem. So the problem with the data you showed on the stream. Yep. Yep. Yes, the problem, the problem, the problem, the problem with the data you've shown on the stream is it's an absolute number instead of compared to the amount of food produced. The point being is that if we actually did buy organic, that number would increase and we would be requiring even more. Most of the manure is required is actually not also this idea that there's this ridiculous abundance of manure is another myth that's been going. So actually, most of the manure, the reason there's not this ridiculous abundance of manure is that the most of the manure is actually required mm -hmm. to stay on the pasture just to regenerate the pasture. Only a very small amount of the manure actually ends up making it to the crops. If we were to just rely on manure, we would actually starve a good percentage of the population. Most of the population would starve to death, like a good chunk of the population would starve to death. There wouldn't be enough manure to feed everyone. We would need synthetic fertilizers. Right. But regardless, the point is that just because something is ubiquitous doesn't mean it can't create demand for a process. But, but are people, is anybody, any farmer, anywhere, breeding cows, breeding cows into existence just for their manure? No, just like there aren't no. people breeding cows into existence, that doesn't mean buying leather is now vegan. I would argue that if, for, for some reason, right, everybody stopped drinking milk, right, and there was absolutely no demand for milk whatsoever, I would argue there, there would still be cows produced for leather. Maybe there Come would, on. but the Come but on. there would be a far less. Maybe sure, maybe sure, maybe there, there would be less far less. It, perhaps it would be, it would be more expensive. Perhaps I don't perhaps. see how this is relevant. It would still be an industry, industry. but if I don't cows, see how this cows, is, I don't see how this is relevant. Look, milk, 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 Michelle, 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 hold on a second. Let's 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 break there it down. There would be no market whatever 
farm manure because nobody would produce nobody cows would just for their poop. Okay, Michelle, let's break it down. So if, if it is the are you saying that if it is the case that cows are not bred into existence for one of their products, then it, then it would not be that makes or breaks the deal between it being harnessed or vegan. Is that what no, is that no. what's being said here? I just need to be clear on what you're saying. Making the difference between an industry that would the manure industry would disappear if, as you said yourself, there's not enough manure to go around anyway, right? So if everybody stopped drinking milk tomorrow and the demand for cows was significantly reduced that manure because there isn't enough of it to go around anyway right would become would become massively expensive so it would be much more cost effective for farmers of both organic and non-organic produce to find alternative ways to which which to fertilize their crops i don't see how that's relevant to my question that's, so that's the question that's is, that's is that's look look the question michelle is michelle the question is are you affirming that if something is vegan just because it would not actually create enough demand that someone would bring a cow, someone wouldn't bring cows into an existence just because of that individual product. Is that what is that the claim you're trying to affirm? Is that the proposition? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. let me let me so there are some people, okay. So there are some people that actually eat cow testicles, right? There are some carnivores that eat Buffalo right. testicles. Now, people don't breed bulls. People don't breed cattle just for their testicles. Is it then the case that someone eating bull testicles is now vegan? No, oh, because they're eating part of the cow. Okay, but now now you're contradicting yourself. So you just said... I'm not. You just, no, I'm not. It is, sure it is. I can spell out the contradiction if you'd like. So you just said that it is the case that something is vegan if cows would not be bred in existence exclusively for that thing. And now I you're saying it is not the case. No, no, now no, you're no, saying no. I said the demand would not be there for manure. Okay, so just to be clear, just to be clear, I'm not talking about manure now. Are you saying that if so something is not harnessed, if a, if the animal wouldn't be bred specifically for that? Thing, no, any part, any, any part, any part of that cow's body, if it's consumed, whether it's milk, whether it's their ears, whether it's their whatever, right? What separates right? that from manure. Right. What separates that from manure? It's, milk is not part of their body; it's something produced by their body. It's just so is manure. What's the difference? The difference is the economic viability of the industry. Dream. What and you what just I'm said, saying, right? You asked me whether it's equally carnist for somebody mm -hmm. to consume or an organic tomato versus a someone on the carnivore diet, right? right? Yeah, and and let's just say that let's just say that the organics end up killing out one cow, and then the carnivore diet ends up killing out like twenty cows. You think that there's any difference? Consuming, they're still creating the demand for that cow. Right, I understand. They're creating the demand for the cow, whether there's some amount of demand for cows that are being created in the organic case, and there's also some amount of demand that's being created in the carnivore diet case. The, my point saying, is that right, I think it makes saying, a difference. Right, Michelle, 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 are saying. producing cows just for their manure. No, I'm not saying and that. I think that's no, not, I think that tendential. If people stop consuming the no, milk uh, no i don't think that's relevant no i don't think i don't think that's a necessary precondition for something to be harnessed i don't think that people producing cows into existence just for product x is a necessary precondition for product x to be x to be harnessed so for example right Right. I'm a, I'm a very practical person. I look for practical solutions. So although these kind of debates are interesting and it's great to interrogate the, the science on this, I look for practical solutions. So 
if we as vegans and we're all vegans i assume that the majority of people in the server are vegan um if we are advocating for a vegan world right what we want is people want not to consume meat, problem, not to consume beef or any part people, of the now we're, now we're just on the second any part of the industry which includes leather right if we get enough people to go vegan, right? Right. The the cows, the breeding of cows you're decreases. The amount, the amount of decreases. The amount of manure that's available is less. The expense of Michelle, uh, you're, you're buying actually that rambling right now. Therefore, you're talking about the second proposition and not the first. Is people to not go on the carnivore diet. Therefore, Therefore, the harnessed who is eating the carnivore diet is worse than the person eating the organic tomato. Okay, so now we were talking about the second proposition and not the first. So let's get back to the first proposition. So what's the symmetry breaker so I, between... I've already, you've, already, you've already given me the answer that I was looking, I for. Was looking for. What's the answer? answer was that conventional farming also uses manure it doesn't matter if it's using less manure it doesn't matter if it's using other things as well as manure generally speaking both types of farming are using manure right so let me ask you this. Why, why does it not matter why does it not matter if it's using less manure hold on michelle michelle can you ask can you, can you answer why michelle michelle oh my god okay, just, michelle please look can you just can i just want to know why the degree the amount of manure being used doesn't make a difference presumably we care about demand we care and we recognize byproducts for a given process can create demand for a process even if they're not being created for that specific byproduct so i just want to know no, why you agree I'm, I'm oh really? oh you no, don't I, really no, why so why why don't you agree with that in the case of manure i've already told you because that would not be an industry we would not be as a society breeding cows into existence just for their manure there is no industry the same thing can be said about bull testicles and yet you said there wasn't the case that bull testicles would be no 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 that's true yes do you think why is it different cow has been produced for its meat right it doesn't matter what kind of meat it's being produced for its meat. So you're saying the intent matters. So, for example, like if so, so let's just be clear. So, just be clear, Michelle. So, Michelle, if the cow, if it were the case that the cow weren't produced for, for its testicles, they were to, the farmer were to say, "Listen, I'm producing this cow for its meat, except for its testicles." Then eating the testicles would be vegan. Is that the case? <laughs> no. Well, now you're contradicting yourself. If you're no. saying the intent is what makes it, if you're saying the intent is the symmetry breaker, no. if it's with the purpose of production of the in original intent is the symmetry breaker, then I could just wand that away. And I can say, well, say that wasn't the case, is eating the, this part of the animal now vegan. And you would have to contradict yourself or change your view. Uh, no. But do I have to go? Have What's to go the symmetry the breaker? Time. Yeah, I think, I, I think you, I think you're. I think you're in a corner here, Michelle. I think you really have to, you think you might have to go back to the drawing. The production of any part of the cow, right? The cow has been bred into existence to sell its body, all of its body, right? I, what about the milk? Its, it's, it's not its body. It's a dairy farm, then yes, it's milk as well. Okay, said, yeah, said, yeah, yeah, sure. So let's say let's say it would, wasn't let's say it wasn't. There would be no demand at all for manure. Michelle, say it wasn't. So expensive. Michelle, say it wasn't produced for its meat. Say, say, say it wasn't How's produced that? for its meat. Anyway, right. <laughs> Michelle. Michelle, say say it wasn't There'd produced. There'd be no demand 
if they were breeding cows just for their testicles, oh, right? The they, they, they would be so expensive, nobody would buy them. It's okay, the same so thing. So our te- great. So are testicles vegan now? Can we eat bull testicles and now they're vegan? No, oh, you keep breaking up. All right, let me switch over to my phone. I'm only so getting cows. I'm only getting cows. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll let me switch over real quick to my phone. Okay, can you hear me now? That's better. That's better. Okay. Okay, so I just don't see the difference, the symmetry breaker between manure and the buffalo testicles in the case where it is specified that the farmers are not breeding the cows for the buffalo test, the, the bull testicles. Well, there's no case in, w- in which that exists. Well, hypothetically, if it did exist, would just you right, say that it's right. vegan? That's, so you saying there's no case in which it exists is just dodging the hypothetical. If we posit that it does exist, would you say that that's vegan? to eat the buffalo testicles, the bull testicles? No, oh, because you'd have to breed the cow into existence any part of its body. Okay, so you're just saying say that... Right. Okay, so just to be right. clear, you're saying right. that what makes the difference is that it is part of its body. It's been bred into existence to consume part of its body. Let me, let me just ask you this. Let me just ask you this. Let's say I just donated a million dollars to a dairy farm without consuming any part of a cow's body. Let's say I just donated a million dollars to a dairy farm uh, to continue their project. I haven't right, consumed, right. I haven't consumed anything. Is what I did vegan? Not really, but, but, Why I, not? I, I, but none of the but cows no, have been yeah. bred for me to have the cows been bred for the purpose of me donating to the dairy farm. Oh, you've broken up again. Have the have the cows been bred for the purpose of me donating to the dairy farm? All cows would be bred into existence. Mm-hmm. Have they been bred into existence for the purpose of me donating? Expand and be able to buy. Okay, that doesn't answer the question. Farm, be able to upscale its business. Therefore, what you were doing wouldn't be vegan. Okay, and how does that not apply with manure? Because manure oh. is a bad so Just to say, just to say, let's, Michelle, just to say, I gave the that same amount not, of money. Not, not the not same. One, one Michelle, people go vegan, it, and the demand um, of cow meat or milk or any other product is no longer there. Okay, so let's say we equalize the amount of money. So let's say we say the same amount of money, the same amount of money that manure, that dairy farms get for manure, I decide to donate that amount of money to the dairy farm. Is that vegan, yes or no? <laughs> well, then they would still be able to upscale their business. To yeah. produce so why is that cows. different? Why is that, why is that not the case with the amount of money they're getting from they're manure? Produce more manure. Okay, so let me ask you this. If, let me ask you this. So if there's a, why is it the case that me donating $100,000 to a dairy farm allows them to upscale their process, whereas $100,000 of, of sales from manure compared to not, them not being able to sell it would not? Because, because if you gave them £100,000 or a million pounds or a million dollars, right, what would they do with that money? Mm-hmm. They would Isn't upscale it? their process, Isn't and I just don't see how that's not the case yeah. if you yeah. compare two different scenarios where there's that same amount of money from the manure compared to them not being able to use it, sell any money, to, use, to sell their manure. Yeah, I know, no I know so what's the symmetry? It, because you're going to say, well, if, you, if, if the manure industry wasn't there, then farmers would have less money and therefore would have to downscale their businesses. Yeah, is that is that to the same degree that the donation would? Yeah, yeah. so uh, the same so, difference as the donate not, so, not yeah. having the donation. 
Yeah. So this is where it's important to clarify yet again that farmers are not just selling manure to the organic farming uh, no, no, I mean, no, 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 just to be clear, just to be clear, I said, no, 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 Michelle, Michelle, no, 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 one second, I understand, I understand, Michelle, 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 hey, I understand that, so let's specify it like this, let's say I donate amount of money equivalent to the average differential of money that a cattle farm would get from the difference between organic and conventional manure, is that the, so let's say it's $80,000 now instead of $100,000. Is that vegan? Right. If I donate any eighty thousand dollars to a dairy farm, is that vegan? Yeah, it is. So what? So so what? What? What's the difference between selling to an organic farmer and selling to a conventional farmer? What? What are you saying? The, what I'm saying is that if I buy a conventional product versus an organic product. One contributes a lot more money to the manure industry than the other. So I'm accounting for that difference. So you saying that difference. I've, yes, I know you've established I've, that, and I've accounted for that difference in my question. So my question is, let's say no, no, it became no, no, $80,000. No, 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 if for the average consumer, right, remember, for the average consumer, that we are using manure in the organic industry and the conventional, conventional industry. industry. I, I already no, accounted no, for that. If I already accounted that. for that. I have already accounted for that. So again, if I donated an amount no, of money equivalent to the haven't. differential, sure, you've, sure you've I have. I, would, you, I can you, walk you through the... Can, no, Yes, but they're, they're using far less. Michelle, they're using far less the is the point, and that makes a difference. They're using... It doesn't matter. That's the point. The point is they're using far less, and because they're using far less, when an, when a consumer makes a decision, if they want more of their dollar to go to the manure industry than not, they would buy organic. If they want less of their dollar to go to the manure industry, they buy conventional. That is an important difference. Mm, it's not now, a difference. It's not a Why is it, it not a difference? Like because it be killing one cow versus killing five cows, neither of those situations. Of those so there's situations. yeah, so so I so if you're gonna say that so if you're gonna say that tomato or an organic tomato following your line well then here's then i don't following that line then michelle i don't understand so if you're going to say killing one cow is equal to killing five cows i don't understand the difference between i don't understand why a carnivore diet would be worse than an organic diet i don't the only difference i see there is one would kill a certain amount of cows and another one would kill far more cows but if you're going to say it doesn't matter how many cows you kill i don't understand why there's a difference between a carnivore diet and and organic produce presumably it's all vegan produce it's all plants no it's they are yeah, not, but it's, yeah, but not it's, they're the creating person, demand the they're crea they are creating demand though we already we already went through through what? this if someone buys what? organic they're creating they're more demand than conventional yes sure they are they are creating they are creating thousands of dollars thousands they're actually creating thousands of dollars also creating the demand for manure they are creating thousands of dollars more demand for manure than conventional. They're creating thousands of dollars more demand for the dairy process than conventional does. Don't now, I don't understand. Yeah, well, I, they I are. We can go through those numbers. I don't think it... No, no, no. no, no. It, makes, it makes thousands of dollars of difference. It does. Doesn't make a difference. It makes a difference. It, it's no, what, it, it absolutely it's what, does. If you are trying to tell the average consumer who is trying to be vegan, who is doing vegan for Veganuary, and you go along and you say to them, "Yes, we're going on." This to is this. just we're going the on second on. proposition now, Michelle. You're dodging again. I know we're we are. About the first I know. One. We are. I'm going to say okay, this. Okay, so now we're talking about the first proposition. We agreed to. Well, you know, I we're talking. There's two propositions. Now you're alternating between the second one and the first one. We can talk about the second one, too. I think yeah, you're wrong right, about that one also. Because the first one, you've answered my question. Well, no. You, 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 right. If you think right. just because right. both right. use... Right. Look, right. again, again, right. Michelle, right. just because right. both right. use... Right. Both, just because... Look, right. Michelle, just because both use manure doesn't mean they use the same amount and any differential in amount. Let me just ask you this. Do you think any differential in amount would make a difference in manure? Do you think, like, if someone... If, one, if it happened to be the case that conventional used a drop of manure... 
and organic only used all manure. Would you say that just because they both use manure that it makes no difference? If the conventional farming industry was huge, as it is, then the proportion of manure it uses is still creating the demand. The demand. Okay, no, I'm, we're talking about no, we're equalizing no, we're controlling out for the absolute different. I, I understand that conventional is a larger industry than organic. That's why it's important to control out for the amount by, by food produced, because it would be, just be silly otherwise. And if the point is, if we were to upscale organic to the degree conventional, that is, would you use even far more manure? So let's not try that tack. Mm -hmm. So again, the question is, if, if conventional, if every conventional farm used a, a, a microscopic speck of manure, and every organic farm used, all, all they used is manure. That's not Would you situation. say that just because, I know it's not, but I'm just, but I'm trying to illustrate a point to you. The point is that point just is because, irrelevant. well, no, it's not, it's completely irrelevant. In fact, it it's, is irrelevant. It be more relevant. It's irrelevant. Look, the question is, the question is, just because two different farming systems use manure, it doesn't mean they use the same amount of manure, and therefore it doesn't mean they contribute the same amount of demand. They are both creating demand. But they are they both Therefore, creating the same amount of demand? No, 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 no. Listen, are they both are they both creating are they both creating the same amount of demand? Are they both creating are they both creating the same amount of demand? That's my point. That's my point. Michelle, are they both are they both creating the same amount of demand? Yes or no? Depends on the, it depends on the country. It depends country, on the crop. They are both across, creating, actually both doesn't creating. no across all countries on average it creates more demand. We can go through each country by the way. Across all continents, well, they're both this, creating demand, aren't they? Aren't so they? therefore, yes, but are they, that's not my question, Michelle. Michelle, that wasn't my question. I didn't ask they if they were both. I didn't ask Michelle. I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you, Michelle. I didn't ask you if they were both creating demand. I ask, okay, Michelle, I didn't ask you if they were both creating demand. I asked you if one was creating more demand than the other. They're both creating demand. Farmers are making money from selling manure. I didn't ask if they were both creating demand, Michelle. I asked if they one was creating more demand than the other. Let's try it. Let's try it again. Let's try. Let's try it again. So I didn't ask you if they were both creating demand. I asked you if one was creating more demand than the other. Both creating demand, therefore. Okay, so let's they try it a third time. I didn't ask you if they were both creating demand. I asked you if one was creating more demand than the other. As I said, it depends on the crop, it depends on the country, it depends on what um, figures you look at. No. I, I can show you all the figures and it, and it really doesn't. I can show you all the figures and it, it's actually ubiquitous. It actually across all continents, uh, organic well, contributes more demand than does, conventional. Does that take into account the other products that are used? In the production, across, production yes, of across, these. across, across all, uh, it's ubiquitous, Michelle. So the my other, question again: the thing, the other products that are used. So you if, you're, if you're saying that conventional farming isn't carnist, right? Yeah, I'm saying conventional for the majority of people, conventional farming isn't carnist, sure. And it's not be because there's a amount of, because again, it all depends on the standard that's being set. Right. The standard so, that's being set, so... the standard that's being set is if you know that there's a or industry that goes out of its way to contribute more economic demand for slaughtering be that for processes that slaughter beans, and mm. you could pay less money. You could pay less money and have an easier time to not engage in that. Engaging in that is carnist, absolutely. Mm. Except for, we'll go back to the point that people who buy organic produce are not contributing to the, the direct breeding into existence of those animals. Okay, well, no direct, more. wait, wait, no direct, more. direct, okay. wait, what do you mean by, hold on, I need clarity, I need clarity. Are you saying the symmetry breaker is the directness? No. Are you, it's not the directness? Because you can be indirect. You can indirectly I'm, create demand for it. I'm, Are you, wait, I need clarity, Michelle. Are you no, saying no. that I need clarity?
I'm saying, Michelle. as I've said multiple times, the person buying the organic tomato hasn't contributed directly to the breeding into existence of that animal. We've been over this. Right. Okay, so let's right. say there. So so let's say there's right. there was a right. indirect. So right. let's say wait 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 right. Michelle right. Michelle 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 Michelle. Okay, so are you saying just let's get clarity, Michelle? Are you saying that it's the indirectness that makes the difference? So no, even if no. something results, even if I don't see how the indirectness. Why, well, you're the one mentioning indirectness, not me. You're the, you're saying the Don't difference is because so. I'm the person who buys the conventionally farmed tomato. Again, because again, how does the consumer know whether the tomato they buy has been farmed using manure or not? Okay, so that's a different question. Okay, so we can talk it's about not, that. Question. And again, the answer, the answer the answer is there's a general there's a general there's a general heuristic is that. If you the were consumer, to, as a general heuristic, again, oh, Michelle, no, okay, I can't do this if you're just going to, I'm sorry, Michelle, I can't do this if you're just going to ramble and over talk me. I really can't. All right, well, I'm going to say, look, I'm going to say, you've, look, you've, got, you've dodged, you've, no, honestly, like, you've dodged not, all my any, points. Not, you've been like, any. you've dodged every, you've dodged my question, not, repeat, not, my question's not, repeated, and you I haven't have, answered. Because I have wanted to your hypothetical no you haven't even answered you haven't answered you haven't answered the actual dodge. question okay look as, as all right we'll keep talking keep trying basically. look michelle look michelle look let's get a symmetry breaker on the table what's the symmetry breaker between the carnivore diet and the organic diet and the organic diet and conventional is it directness is that what the symmetry breaker is Again, the person buying the meat, the carnivore dieter, carnivore diet. whatever cut they use, whether they're buying the steak or they're buying the ears or they're buying the testicles, I don't care what they're buying, they're creating the demand for that piece okay, of and meat. Why are they, and why is that not true with manure? Because there is not an industry just for manure. No. There's not an industry just for buff, bull testicles either. No, so what's no. the difference? <sighs> right. And the manure that is produced that is sold both to organic and conventional farms. What to buy, they don't <laughs> know that organic tomato has been farmed using manure. Or Let me ask you this, Michelle. I'm actually just curious. Let me ask you this. Let's say, let's say, <laughs> let me just ask you this. Um, let's say that instead of fertilizing the plants uh, with manure, they fertilized it with steaks. So they took the meat from the cows and then 80% of the steaks, uh, organic would use uh, for all of their, all of their fertilizer would be steaks. And then 20% of the fertilizer of conventional would be steaks. Would it be would there be still no difference between buying conventional plants and organic it would be, plants? It would, be, it would be incredibly expensive, therefore no farm. No okay, well, no, but that's that's just saying the hypothetical is implausible. I'm just saying if that were the case, I'm looking. If that were the case, Michelle, if that were the case, you're dodging. You're do the Michelle, you're dodging the hypothetical now. If that were the I'm case, not. Michelle, I'm not. Now, you I'm absolutely are dodging the hypothetical. Completely. You're completely. So here, again. You're you're not you're avoiding the hypothetical by saying that it's not practical. Of the situation, or else think okay. about it. Think so about it. What is? It seems like you're that. avoiding this question. That. You're avoiding it. Look. So the question is, if they were, if organic was fertilizing their crops. I understand. I understand the pragmatics. Pragmatics aside, if organic decided to no, fertilize their plants no, with no, steaks and oh, conventional oh, decided oh, to fertilize oh, their plants oh, with 20 oh, percent oh, steak would it or would it not make an ethical difference to buy conventional over organic it would make a massive it would make a difference for the farmer because they'd have because to bring the cow into existence to is one connect. choice more ethical than the other both unethical both. Both equally unethical. They are both equally unethical. Oh, okay. Just okay. like, just, just like both. If you're going from your line, 
if you're saying that products produced using manure are carnist, then also conventional farming is also carnist. I don't agree okay, with so that. Just I don't to be agree clear, with either. So just to be so just to be clear, Michelle. So uh, let's just be clear about this. So if we were living in a world where organic used all of their fertilizer from the meat of cows, from steaks, they used all of their fertilizer. And conventional only used 20% of their fertilizer as the meat of cows, and the other 80% was just synthetic fertilizer. You would say that there's no both ethically, wrong, both, ethically wrong. both equally equally wrong, though. They would both, both be connected. buying, could the They're same organic and conventional product would both be equally wrong. If, is, right, is and only wrong? if the consumer could, could go to the product and choose the conventionally farmed piece of tomato that was definitely not not made not produced using any farm of animal farm of right animal. no i that understand would, that, that. yeah be. yeah so just to be clear if that wasn't on the table if it was just a heuristic let's say that look let's say the heuristic was two percent let's say it was one percent let's say one percent of let's, be, let's do it, it like this michelle. Not, wait not, i just not, i think not, there's a reductio not, on your not, view here michelle let's say not, that not, we're living no, in a world, no. let's say, Michelle, they were living in a world where organic used all of their fertilizer from the meat of cows, from the meat of, from steaks, and mm -hmm. conventional used 0.00001% of their fertilizer as steaks. If the consumer... Uh, and the rest were... If so the wait, wait, just let me, let me finish with the question, Michelle. Let me finish the question. Let me finish the question. So the question on the table is, would you consider there to be an ethical difference between choosing conventional and choosing organic of the same product? Not if the consumer couldn't tell which one of the conventional had been produced using manure and which hadn't. They'd both be equally unethical. Okay, okay. So, so they would both be equally unethical, even if one on average, uses 0.000001% of the stakes, Both and the other one makes sure make sure to use all of the stake. The other one makes sure to use all of they their fertilizer stake, stake, just to be clear. They, they would both be equally, with, equally unethical. Is that all correct? All vegan campaigners would need to do would be to see clarity. Wait, should you just answer the question? Would they both be equally, would they both? Would they be? We're using the stake produced, produce, and which we're producing the Vegan produce. Okay, so then would there be an ethically would there be an ethical difference between on your view would there be an ethical difference between would there be an ethical difference between choosing one product or the other, Michelle? I've just told you. So if there the would there would be on your view. Not tell okay. the difference between the okay, product let me ask you this, Michelle. The manure versus not then. Yeah, Michelle, let, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Let's say there was an industry that fertilized their plants with the blood of slaughtered children, okay? They took a bunch of the blood of slaughtered children. They went out of their way. There's an organic industry that goes out of their way to take little babies, uh, human babies, and to slice them up and to take their blood and, and fertilize crops with it. And now there's the conventional industry that does the same, but to 0 0.00000001 of that degree. There's like a tiny chance that one kid would have been slaughtered for that versus the organic industry that slaughters billions and billions of children uh, used to fertilize the crops. Is there an ethical difference between buying the organic product or buying the conventional product? It's exactly the same as the argument we've been over. Just because the humans makes no difference to my argument. Okay, so just to be clear, so just answer the question. So just to be clear, it is just as bad to buy the organic product, which goes out of their way to slaughter billions of children for the fertilizer, as it is the conventional, which may have a 0.000001% chance of having Firstly, one to slaughter child. It would be equally unethical. Is that correct? Firstly, if they are producing those children just to slaughter them, to fertilize their crops and for no other reason they are both unethical but the organic one would be, be more well, let's unethical. say they weren't let's say they okay let's say they weren't yeah in your industry as we've already 
Jake. So let's say it was. Explain. Let's say they weren't. Let's say they weren't being bred for that purpose, Michelle. So now you're just now you're hypo, now you're now you're pragmatic shielding. So nope, we're gonna wand away the pragmatic shield. So now let's say they weren't being bred. Now let's say the children weren't being bred specifically for that purpose, but there's a difference in demand for that purpose regardless. So they weren't specifically being bred for it, but there's a specific yep. demand differential yep. regardless. So now are they equally wrong? If the consumer can't tell the difference between those uh, those products that have been produced using the blood of children versus the artificial fertilizer, they are both equally wrong. Yes, I don't make okay, any so just to, I don't okay, make any human child and a cow. I'm a vegan. I don't make any distinction. Any between, distinction okay, so between. just to do, okay, so just to be clear, what we what we've agreed on, what what you what we've agreed on is your view. Your view is that if organic were going out of its way, they weren't breeding the children directly for this purpose. If they were going out of their way um, to use the blood of slaughtered children, even though they weren't breeding the children for their blood, they were being bred for other purposes. But if they went out of their way to purchase the blood of the slaughtered children and trillions and trillions of slaughtered children were being purchased versus conventional where it has a 0.00001% chance, of, of being purchased for that blood even if, so long as we stipulate that they weren't being bred for that purpose you would on your view there would be no ethical difference between choosing organic both, over yeah, both equally both unethical equally unethical. Both unethical, yes. if as i said the consumer cannot tell the difference between those products that have been produced using the blood of children versus the artificial fertilizer that isn't the blood of children, blood of children. well just they to be clear they, they there's something they can choose between they can choose between having a very low probability of that happening versus having a very high probability of that happening. doesn't matter. Does that not matter? doesn't matter. They're both unethical. Both unethical. Oh, okay. So they would both be unethical regardless. Okay. All right. So, like, I think, I think I'm, I, I have you exactly where I want you. I think this is the level of hilarity that organic harnesses need to go to. And I, I, think the, I think I would probably end the debate here unless you want to talk about health and stuff. Or if you want to talk about health of uh, yes. organic products if you want to talk about other aspects like environment we can talk about that too but i think on the uh, ethical no, level, I, I, mean, no, I mean i i to be honest to be honest avi i don't buy organic produce <laughs> this is the funny thing <laughs> I don't buy oh, oh, oh. it's too expensive i, I think it's just I, I a, think a racket a racket well I, i'm glad you don't know let me I've just never... look, i i think that no the point being is that no i'm first of all i'm glad you don't buy organic but the but the point being here michelle is that I think you have, in this debate, you have come to hilarious absurdities just in the defense of organic carnism, regardless if you buy organic or not. No, my, my point has been that unless there is clarity in the, um, for the consumer, right, then you can't say... You can't make that blanket generalization. That well, there's organic, clarity to organic. the degree of probability. There's clarity to the degree of probability. As no, I don't think that matters no. for the consumer. Okay, so it doesn't matter. If you say that doesn't matter, that's fine. If you say that you and need to, think, if you're saying you need, not. if you're saying, Michelle, if you're saying that you need clarity to the point, if you're saying you need clarity to the point that you need to know 100% with 100% certainty that there's not a single amount of animal product in this produce for it to make a difference. And even if you know that there would, if there's any amount of product, it would be far less than the other product. That doesn't matter. That's your, you can have that position. I think it's an insane position, but you can have that position. Um, I'm just saying the same thing for the blood of slaughtered children. The only other thing I would say in defense of organic is that we know that some of the pesticides used in conventional farming are damaging to ecosystems or damaging some to some of the pesticides farm used in organic farm farming, farming are damaging the ecosystems too. Do you have well, any data some, if there's a difference? I know that some uh, I know you've got some data on organic uh, supposedly organic pesticides, but again, I would argue that in any industry what, that are causing uh, harm to the the wildlife ecosystems, then we we've got to question that industry. Okay, well, at but this moment, you're not, establishing a different, you're not establishing a difference between organic and conventional. Then you're just you're just saying something that's true of both the things. Yeah, I am. Like, like like I said, I think both industries. Both. That's industries, not a defense of organic, though. That's not a. I don't want to defend organic. 
I don't, I don't, I don't want to defend organic. Your literal words were, your literal, your words were in defense of organic. I mean, I think we should go back to the <laughs> oh, recording all here right, again. All right. In defense of what the organic industry for the average consumer, and this is the bottom line for me, right? I, I'm a practical person and I, I try to look for practical solutions. And whilst, as I said right at the beginning of the debate, whilst it's great that we do, that people like you take the time to look into this and have all the stats and all the facts and figures on this, for the average consumer, I think that the entirety of the of the farming industry, whether they're farming tomatoes or whether they're farming wheat or maize or whatever, it doesn't matter, right, that we've got a long way to go to make farming ethical. All farming okay. at the moment. I don't see how this is relevant to the proposition of whether organic is carnal. So it might be. It might be. If you, how, but I'm saying how is from this the relevant? From how, the is relevant? how is this relevant to the first proposition? It's not relevant to the first proposition, but you asked me. Great. Asked so now we're off that proposition. Now we're not talking so, about the proposition anymore. So now we're just, we're, now we're just, we're just, uh, now we're just on the tangent. It's not relevant to the first proposition. You said two minutes ago. I thought that's what we were debating, though. Minutes, we were debating the first like proposition. Yeah, that's what I'd like to bring up. But I don't need to. I don't necessarily need to debate it because I'm saying that all farming. All farming, whether it's organic or conventional, has got a long way to go before it will satisfy me personally right. as a vegan that it's ethical. I don't think any farming practice farming at, the moment, at the moment. Clearly, clearly there's one that's more ethical than the other. Not necessarily. This is the point. To, to be honest, Avi, I think we've I think we're gonna have to agree to disagree. I think there's a long way to go. For farming, that's my bottom that's line. Just because we can agree, just because we can agree that there's, there's a long way to go for farming, doesn't mean that one option that 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 all options are equal. They're both unethical. So wait, for do me, you think that uh, there's an impairment between? Wait, wait, Michelle, Michelle, do you think that it's true? That do you think do you think that it is the case that if that if we have a long way to go for all options that it follows there's an entanglement between that and the proposition that all options are ethically equal do you think that's true no i think all options are unethical so all are all options ethically equal then unethically equal They're equally unethical yeah okay so just so to be clear so that so, so okay so if if so just to be clear we're saying that if we have a long way to go for all options, it follows that all options are equally unethical. Yeah, they're all unethical. About the, About the, the, minority, uh, the minority of the industry, which is veganic. Okay, I just... I, a person going to the shop to buy some vegan food, right, and they go to the produce section... And they pick up a bunch of tomatoes. They don't know whether that has been produced using manure or not. Manure well, or we've not. been through this, Michelle. I mean, I guess, so, so Michelle, here, here's the problem. The problem is, I think that. So here's the problem. There's, there's, yeah, there, there's clearly for me. There's clearly just because there may be a long way to go for all options. It doesn't mean all options are therefore equivalent. For me, there can still be options that are far more ethical than other options. Just because, the, and just because there's a long way to go for both options, doesn't mean that that's not the case. Said that both whether you whether you're talking about the specifics of what goes on in conventional farming, what goes on in organic farming, both have their un, their unethical practices. That I'd like to see. Okay, like but we've see. already like we've already went through this, like Michelle. Like so we've already, like Michelle, held to we've already, we've held already, to we've already, we've already, Michelle, we've we already went through this. And my response is, my response is, Michelle, my response is that just because that's true doesn't mean one isn't more ethical than the other. As I said, I think they're both equally unethical, but for different well, reasons. Different I mean, reasons. I mean, look, if look, you're taking the view that it's just as wrong to kill. A million people than it is to kill one person yeah. so if that's the case then sure like if you i just want you to like just to be clear 
Like you have the view that torturing a universe, torturing, torturing a multiverse of people. So torturing a multiverse of people and and cows and chickens and and fish or whatever is just as equivalent to torturing one human and one cow and one chicken and one fish. They're both they're both equally non-vegan. Okay, so they're both equally wrong. So one murder, so it's like opening Auschwitz, Bergenau, like the entire Holocaust. It was just as equally wrong as killing one person. Both are equally non-vegan. Okay. All right. I'll just, oh. I guess I'll just leave it at that. I think we're going to agree, yeah. agree to disagree on that. Yeah. 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 It's been really nice talking to you. And uh, when are you going to do the point, uh, part two of your analysis of the Chris Cresser uh, James uh, Oh, that's going to come in time. We just have some Yeah, we just we just have some technical. Yeah, we just have if some technical. If the debate's done, I'm just uh, going to move us out of this room now. Nice uh, having you for the debate. I'm stopping the recording here.